guys. So today I'm going to teach you how to make this cool particle effect and basically get it so it's parented to this little sphere. So wherever you move, it'll always follow it around, which kind of allows you to make some cool animations with it. So if you're new to Niagara, uh, this is going to help you a lot. So first I'm going to make a new level. Uh, I'm going to choose basic mainly because I want some lighting to start off. Um, all these down here uh, was from the example. I'm going to delete all that and basically just remake it all. Save the level. This one I will name orb level. Cool, now I'm gonna make a Niagara system, a new system from selected, and then do hanging particles. Click the uh, green plus sign, accept, and then material, uh, two of them. Uh, first one I'll name orb. And then another one I will name Particle. Sweet. Now open the Niagara system. Now delete the sprite renderer because we won't need that. Um, scale, other scale, drag. Uh, we won't need any of those. Uh, click the check sign or plus sign to your render and do mesh renderer. Um, click on meshes, bring that down and switch it over to cube. Um, you can use the wheel on your mouse to zoom out and then change facing mode to velocity. Cool. Um, all these are good. Change um, bounds mode. Ooh, I guess we'll say this later. Uh, there's spawn ray. We're going to change that later. Cool. Mesh scale. Go to uniform and click this down. Right click it and do float from curve. Um, here, if you click on the little red, yeah, keep that zero and then this should be 0.15. Cool. Basically, it's going to change the scale and then have them slowly get smaller and die. Ooh, now I'll do calculate uh, bounds mode and change that to fixed so they stay in a certain bounds. Now let's start adding some effects. So do drag. Um, yeah, change drag to 10. Uh, click on wind force and then basically just change turbulence to none. And then do wind speed 25, and then change the X to 25 as well. That way it's kind of moving in a direction. Next, we'll do a point attraction force. Um, the strength can be about 100. Radius is pretty much how it's affecting, so 4,500 should get it all. Next, add a gravity force. Um, just keep that as is, how it will pop in. Now a vortex force to get some spin. Change the force mount to 500. And then the Z to 100. Uh, maybe 50. Cool, uh, go back in the drag and take out rotational drag. And then we are going to add a curl noise force. Let's change that strength over to 7,000. This to 1. And then the Z can be 0.5. So see how it's already kind of spinning a little bit? Click on the main hanging particles uh, and change the uh, spawn rate over to 500. And then let's add one more curl to give us a little more chaos to it. Uh, this one could be negative 5,000. Uh, the frequency on this one could be 1. And then let's do x.5. Negative 0.5. Sweet. So yeah, uh, really just play around with those till you feel like you like how it looks. Um, and then once you're happy, uh, you can bring it into your main project. So compile, save, 
and then now we'll get started on more of the atmospherics of it all. <clears throat> so add a sphere, and then we can delete the uh, landscape. We don't need that. And then do a camera, cinematics, uh, cine camera actor, um, right click on it, and then click pilot. So now you're piloting the camera. I'll change it to uh, DSLR. Uh, for lens setting, I'll do 30 millimeter prime. And then now we open the contact drawer and click on the orb material. So right click, type in constant, uh, and do constant three vector. And then hold S and click, which will bring up parameter value. Change this one over to strength. And then right click again and add multiply. Now plug each of these in. And then the last one to the emissive, this is going to make it glow. Uh, changing it to one. It's not glowing yet because it's black. Go high up. I kind of want it to look like a nice bright orange. Perfect. And then I will change this to 2.5. Nice. Apply, save. Bring out your content drawer, right click, create material instance, and then click on your sphere and type in the name and add the instance. Sweet. Now let's do the particles. So again, right click, type constant, and do the uh, three vector. Plug that one into the base color. Um, this one will be for the metallic texture. Another uh, just S and click to get these to pop up. Uh, metallic texture, roughness, and plug it into metallic and roughness. Uh, for this one, uh, I guess I'll change the metallic first to see what it's going to look like. Uh, point 0.3. So I need it to actually yeah, have some color to it. Okay, that's not bad. All right, apply, save. And then now you're going to create a material instance, but we have to go back in the Niagara, uh, click on the actual hanging particles. Actually, sorry, go down to mesh renderer, enable material override, click add on that little plus sign, and then basically just keep bringing down these drop down menus until you're here. And then type in particle. Um, if you have starter packs, this is what these are. Um, so do particle instance. And then compile and save. So now you've added your materials to both of these. So now you drag and drop your uh, Niagara in. And then if you literally drag it over sphere and let go, it'll parent to the sphere. So now every time you're moving the sphere, the um, Niagara will follow it. Uh, click on directional light. We want the light to be kind of dim, so it's like mysterious. So I'll do 0 0.05. There we go. Now rotating the sun a little bit, trying to get it further back so it's like a, a midday look. And then exponential height fog, just fog to the highest. Uh, start distance, let's put that about 3,500 so it starts past the, uh, the sim. You don't want it to be actually be on the top of the sim. Uh, volumetric fog, increase that to as high as you can. Um, you can play around the extinction scale. I will go 1.6 for now. Um, and then delete these. We don't need any of them. Cool. So now all you have is the uh, fog and the directional light. And then if you click on the camera and do this little pin, it'll pin the camera so you, you have like one constant view to design around. Uh, so go uh, to volumes, add a post-process volume. Um, immediately always do this, click on infinite and, and allow infinite bounds. Um, Find exposure. I usually tweak exposure just to get like the 
light dialed in perfectly. Um, a little lower. Negative 1.4. That looks good. Temperature. Actually, I don't want to do that temperature. I like doing the light's temperature. So open the directional light, and then you can change this temperature here to a little bit of a blue. Kind of get like an orange and tealish look. There you go. I like that. And now let's add, so go back to the shapes, um, lights, and add a spotlight. This is going to give a little more texture to the front because the light, uh, it's kind of one note if it's only coming from one direction other than the emissive orb in the middle. Also, how you set it up will kind of change how much the light's giving off. So this is my spotlight, gonna point it over at the orbs. Kind of getting it almost like the opposite end of the directional light. So they're kind of filling up the holes of all the shadows. So let's increase the intensity all the way. And then we'll move it nice and close so you can see like where it's actually affecting. Make sure it's on it. Actually, we can change the color to, let's go green. So it really stands out what it's lighting up. Um, so move it forward from here. Yeah, increase the radius. So now you can clearly tell like all the light that's coming from the spotlight. So you can kind of key in how much light you want it to be. You're kind of just trying to make, like, add a little more texture to it. Cool. So now let's change it orange. To kind of fill the light and make it feel like that orb is a little brighter. Now if you move the sphere, since it's parented, the actual sim will follow it, which is super cool. So now if you want to try and make a little cinematic from it, uh, go back to the shapes, add a, um, actually, sorry, this is wrong. Uh, so click this little movie symbol, add level sequence, click OK. And now you basically want to go up to track, uh, actor, and then do the camera and the sphere. So now you can play around with this to kind of make something that's yours, but just like quickly go over how to do this. Um, if you click this little plus sign, it is a keyframe. So I went to the very front, so it's keyed where I want it to be in the front. And then I brought it all the way back, and I think I'm going to just like have this zoom in from nowhere up to the camera. So I'll move all the way back. Also, if you uh, hold shift while you're pulling it, you'll follow the object. Um, so now I'll go back to pilot camera so I can see the animation and see the orb comes at you and the sim follows. And then now I kind of pulled it out so it'll come up to in front of you and hold. So yeah, just play around with the keyframes, constantly move it around. Um, so you can get like some cool design to show up how it like animates close to you. You can have it like circling around the screen. Just play around with it. I'm just showing you this so you have like a, a general idea how to use a sequencer in case you haven't used it that often. And then to go over my um, export settings, you uh, click this little clapperboard right here. Um, make sure it's movie render queue. If you don't have a movie render queue, go up to edit, plugins, type in movie render queue and it will be right there. Just check mark it, it'll make ask you to restart and restart it. Once that's done, make sure it's clicked off, click on the clapperboard, go to unsafe configure. Uh, once it opens up, delete the uh, JPEG, add .exr, and anti-aliasing is uh, 
1, 16, and then check the override. Uh, once that's done, just uh, go down to render local after you pick the um, directory you want it to be in. And uh, yeah, it'll start exporting for you. Cool, guys. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment if you want to know anything more and um, subscribe and like. Thanks.